Hello everyone, I'm Drumat and today we're going to do a Xerath guide on mid lane. Now I know you're used to Talia guides, a Talia guide will come probably next week again or a video that explains some stuff on jungle or on mid lane. But for today's video we're going to do a complete Xerath guide for mid lane. I'm going to show you how I play as a Talia main because uh, usually Talia mains like to play roamers. Xerath is not exactly a roamer, he's artillery, but he has an ult that allows you to roam, so that's good as well. Now. I'm going to go very fast through runes, I'm playing with Arcane Comet, Mana Flow Band, Transcendence, Scorch, Perfect Timing and Cosmic Insight, also two ability power runes and armor, I'm starting with Doran's Ring and two potions, and I play with armor and stopwatch because I'm against Zed, Master Re and champions like that. Now you're going to max your Q and then W, and usually you'd want to use your W before Q, so you can uh, actually uh, hit it every time. Now, most important is that early on uh, you want to proc your mana flow band as often as possible to get it stacked. Also, you want to proc Comet as often as possible to get it to get the damage on the enemy champion. Also, you want not to do what I did here. I ruined two CS and I got nowhere basically. So you want to focus on farming. That's another important thing that you want to do. And those Qs are awful, man. At least I can dodge his Qs. Also, for secondary runes, some players play with Taste of Blood and Ravenous Hunters, others uh, with uh, Presence of Mind and uh, Last Stand, uh, but usually, uh, Coup de Grace, sorry, usually you'd be interested to uh, focus on only one set of runes if you need HP or if you're against someone who has sustain you'd rather go for that. I'm gonna lose heavily CS here. Okay so early on don't do what I just did here. I focused too much on damaging him. I did not focus enough on actually getting CS so I'm going to focus on getting CS now which was my main mistake in the first place. But usually you have to... oh my god that was bad. Okay Got him here, got a lot of poke down here. Usually you'd want early on to not fight that much, you'd want more to actually farm and get some Qs down, you'd want to start stacking up because... This guy dodges pretty well actually. Because you'd, you'd shine in mid game mostly, that's the point where you actually shine. So if you want to actually be useful uh, later on faster, uh, that's one of the reasons I'm going for... Uh, well, I'm not going this game, but you should go for boots instead of stopwatch. Uh, you should focus on... Oops. I think I'm gonna die here. Okay, that was a very bad barrier. And next W, he can actually kill me. But this guy plays very good in dodging. I need to one-up my, uh, my skill shots. And also, I'm getting out farm. Great. Uh, okay, so... Basically, again, the main factor that you need to get out of the early game, I'm going to recall here because I hate it, uh, you want to get to mid game and you want to get uh, dot items that actually enable you. And regarding items, we're going to talk a little about them right now. I'm going for a second door run because I am against a Zed and at level 6 he will jump on me, I don't have barrier, I will have my flash to escape. Normally. Your damage gets enabled when you go for Ludens, you when you actually buy it when it's finished. Your first part of, well, mana slash damage comes with Lost Chapter, but you'd be most interested in finishing Ludens, then Sork Shoes, then Rabadons, Orb, and then go for Zonias or Void stuff, depending on what you need. Or also, you can go for, uh, you can go for a more Anomicon so that you complete the Orb. Uh, if their team comp requires it, so I'm gonna do this here, I'm gonna miss that CS, but the rest of Okay, so I'm 10 CS behind, it's okay. We're still good, we're still damaging, and he actually is not stupid enough to recall in proximity, is he? Nah, he's not, okay. So I'm going to push here right very fast. And I'm going to recall as well because he's actually losing CS here and we're going back to an even lane. Now, my lanes are doing very fine. My job here this game is actually to not die, but let me just uh, 
tell you about the field build, obviously get some vision wars from time to time. You'd be interesting mostly early on on farming and surviving, and to the mid game you'd be, interest, you'd be interested in poking people with WQs or QW and getting those arcane comet procs. And in the mid to late game you can even one shot someone basically well, multiple shots with right of arcane with your ultimate. You want to max Q, you want to go for W second most of the time, uh, focusing on damage uh, and this is mostly for the skills, but uh, item builds should include also Ludens, Sork Shoes and Rabadons, Zonia if you're against Nasty Assassins, but mostly you should get these uh, items. And and you shouldn't lose this much CS, obviously. Now he's level 6 and I should dodge more of this, but he's not, he's not going to dive me, you know that for sure, oh my god. And I'm level 6 as well, I'm gonna miss, I think that he's missing, and I've seen that word. I'm going to actually do this, and I move him back because that might be here, okay. And now I'm not seeing that, but I don't care because no one is around. And you should actually test people with Xerath, as you can see I'm actually... Uh, in early game doing a lot of cues to actually see where uh, he actually dodges and then you start hitting it But if you want to hit your spells easier just do W Q and you're going to hit it every time and uh, If you actually want to be useful in mid game you have just to spam cues from a distance and also keep tracking of mana uh, Also as you can see I'm keeping distance here so that I don't get randomly ulted If he ults me now he won't have damage because he used his Q so I know that, he knows that too. And now I'm actually saving up for the next book. I'm actually using way too much mana that more than I should. And this vision word allows me to have some sort of defense against roaming. But there is no roaming or ganks possible from Master Ri or Lulu. Uh, but I'd rather stay safe and not feed. The main thing that I should do is simply scale to mid game. In mid game you have your Rabadons, your Ludens, maybe Orb, maybe you start building towards that void stuff. And so you actually can do much more than this. Now if he, he'd be a good player, if he gets hit by one more Q he'll recall. Because it's very simple to escape a Xerath and most Xerath players would not probably get the kill against someone of equal skill. I'm gonna ping that he's missing. And I'm not saying that you shouldn't follow. You should follow every time. I mean he hinted. Uh, I'm still gonna recall because there might be a mastery, but this game is a stomp and I don't really show you much skill material here and I'm not even getting the book. Recall every time when you have the book finished, not earlier. But well, Zed Rome, Zed died, still in my favor. I just kinda want to reach mid game without free winning this game because everyone else in their team int, apparently. Uh, and I want to sh showcase some mid game theory and mid game moments. I'm 0 0 0 for Christ's sake. Uh, do not expect as a Xerath player to actually destroy lane in terms of, I don't know, uh, kills. Because if the players are good, he will, they will just recall as you have no 100 to 0 potential. So you get that. Uh, but you can push and go for an ultimate. And that usually works in terms of. Uh, sort of roaming. So now that I now because that I pushed I can go here, I can word and I can start up an alt bot following a, maybe an Ash alt, but she does not have alt yet. I'm still going there, I don't care. Zed is probably still on mid. We have a vision word here. Okay, gonna do this. Oh, that's some good side stepping. That's some very good side stepping. That is missing. That is missing. That is missing. So we have to be careful to that. Now, if he ults on me, he'd be stupid. Because I actually have everything. Okay. Got the stun going down there. So we're gonna we actually won the fight pretty fair and square here. We're we're far too ahead for them. 
Okay. I still have Zonia, so I don't mind if uh, I'm gonna get ulted. We back off now. We back off now, Zed probably gonna ult someone. I need a minion. Also, proc your passive as much as you can. Because you're playing against melee most of the time if they are assassins, so you can actually hit your Q, proc your passive, hit your Q, so that's another tip that you should uh, that you should play around or with, sorry. Uh, and so, as you can see, I'm slowly starting to go towards my items and uh, we're starting to scale and I actually don't have magical footwear so I'm gonna get boots now because I thought I had it. Last game I played with it and because I'm against that I picked stopwatch instead. Uh, magical footwear it's good but it's not that good in some cases because if they will move my speed and you get behind you're not going to be able to escape some ganks and you have some nasty maybe positionings that are going to happen. I dislike this wave greatly, so I'm gonna do this. And because, because I'm actually uh, this ahead in terms of my team, I don't really even require to do much. And because I have a vision word here, you can actually word this bush freely. Normally, they should get a vision word here to be to be okay with it. And this set cannot do much. It's probably bot again. Flashed here. Okay, still got him. Still got him. Oh, come on. So yeah, we get another kill. I didn't do much, but I'm still winning. Uh, this is not probably the best example for showcasing Uxeras, but this is a good example of what you can actually expect here. Look at the damage that I output onto him. I didn't even need to use my flash or my actual uh, uh, stopwatch because of the Blitzcrank roam and because we're so far ahead as a team. So we actually got the free kill on Zed. And I'm gonna do this. I'm gonna help him a bit. Then I'm gonna get one more plate here. I'm not gonna get one more plate. Look at the damage. Just this is a pure example of how Xerath is actually useful. And you can output in mid game these kinds of damage 24-7. Even if you are behind and you get the shutdown or a kill, you, you complete items, you get stronger and then voila, you deal thousands of damage very fast. So this is a very good situation. Oops, I got enough money for this. No, uh, uh, this is a visual bug. This is a visual bug and I hate it. You can sometimes finish Sork Shoes faster than Ludens if you have them in sight of gold. I mean, if you have a hundred gold that they did, you buy it. That was brilliant but sadly Lissi will actually die here will no longer die but yeah they are way too aggressive for this uh, we have a Shen that's pretty good as well somehow he won lane against Rise of all people and they are farming now with Rise being here I can focus on hitting this tower I can focus on going bot uh, I think I will go bot because there is no one bot. And you need to actually be on the side lane if no one is. And I believe. Ah, okay. Never mind. There was a teleport that just came. Okay, gonna get this too. Also, a neat trick is to hit minions, melee minions, when the tower is hitting the cannon. And you can then full Q and kill the cannon plus all the minions. It's very simple to get cannons Xerat later on compared to other champions because, well, your Q does, even though it costs 120 mana, you can get from the passive mana back. And here is a free kill for me. No longer because shields. And somehow Rise killed that guy. I 
I don't know what listen is doing. Probably nothing good. So yeah, right now I'm hitting my targets, my early game targets, not to die to farm decently. I have the same farm as Zed, if not better. Quite better, actually. And we're transitioning into a mid game where actually I'm going to do much more than Zed, especially against their comp, which has no CC to actually get on me. And your job in mid game to late game is just to stay behind in team fights and be the artillery that you're supposed to be. I would put tons of damage, don't be afraid to use your ult whenever you feel like it. Remember you have 4-5 casts at level 11 and 16, most people forget that. And this is a free kill right here. Okay, look at the stun. Okay, try to always hit your stun like that. Uh, especially against champions that <laughs> if they get stunned, well... If, if it, you do it on squishes then it's over. That stun it's deadly. And as you can notice here, I don't have that much mana yet because I did not finish my item. But if I hit a stun here, a well placed stun, that turns into a blitzcrank hook. And combined with Ash, we're actually dealing a lot of worse. But I'm gonna ping them to back off here. Yeah, it's fine, we good. And I'm 005, I didn't even participate in that much stuff because that much stuff did not happen around me because it was pointless to happen around me. I hope Blitzcrank does not die there. So mainly as Xerath takeaways are just play early game right, get towards your mid game, get farming, get the vision words down, finish Ludens, finish Rapidons, and in the mid game WQ someone deal half of H their HP, usually target their mid laner or their ADC, or even, well, the hypercare, the one who's fed, if they are squishy and you do two Qs on them, well they are out for the next fight, and if their strongest person is out for the next fight, you basically win it solo by doing that, and I fucked up that, okay, somehow Rise is a killing spree now. I kind of like that because it means that the game go keeps going and because they have hyperscaling champions such as Kogma, we rise. Uh, we are actually going for a longer game. Oops. Okay. So you have to play relaxed at this stage of the game. Just wait for the team hide to happen. Get Vrera Trinket if you want, clear with your jungler. And. get this buff if you can. <laughs> I mean I'm certain there is some player waiting in that bush. There is none apparently, so I'm gonna take it. Then I'm gonna move towards this. Because this is free. So get all the farm, get scaling, get 10 CS per minute if you can. And get objectives after that. You are getting at the point where you become so strong that your damage will actually deal 90% of HP of someone's. Uh, and this guy is maybe dead. He's so strong. I'm actually able to get kills from here. I got two assists from that distance. And we basically won the game here. So yeah, look at look at the Xerat power right there. If your team engages on the right half of the map and you're on the left half of the map, uh, then yeah, you can reach it with your ult. But you can do that as Talia too. I don't uh, I don't deny it. But it's a thing that you should play with. Also, mid to late game, your goal is to stay back and survive. It's not a complicated champion at all compared to other champions. It's just the early game that's quite boring. It's such as it's kind of like a casting, and. Uh, your mana will end pretty quickly if you're not that good, but even then, in mid game, if you kept your early game presence strong by just farming and, well, following roams smart, if they smart, if they uh, roam through the river, you have to follow it smartly by not going blindly in bushes. Uh, but even then, look how I'm actually positioning myself to actually fight here. And I'm not forcing anything. Look at the distance that I'm keeping. That's the main level of respect you're supposed to do. And if I hit one Q or E on that Lolo. I'm 
actually getting a kill. Okay. So we're going to recall now. We're going to get parts of uh, parts of Rabadons. And we're already having stopwatch and boots from the runes. That's a lot of gold actually for us. And the stopwatch is extremely strong in this context and against Rengar and against champions like that. So stopwatch is a good thing to actually pick. So we talked about runes, we talked about builds, we talked about early and mid game and late game phases. Let's talk about a bit win condition. Z actually Z actually didn't kill her here. Yeah, we got him. Can I kill her? Who else? <laughs> Everyone else is dead besides Kama. Well, can I farm rights with it? So yeah, the win condition late game, mid to late game is to go towards uh, is to go towards this long QA so that you can actually kill someone. You can actually do some tricks with Xerath. You can flash Q extending your range very much you can uh, try to deal lots of damage but be careful your win game condition is not to waste your entire mana pool on some random fight we're actually lo losing here okay i think it's just these two now And I suck at flashing. Hello, my friend. Okay, he's out. I'm just gonna do this and back off. He played pretty good there. So, do we recap? You know, you got all the points. We understand the lesson one, two, three, and four, and five based on what I said, based on builds, items. Uh, win condition and so on uh, normally again the win condition should be some artillery from the back end of the team fight uh, towards their front line or hitting surprising uh, their ADC or their mid laner or their bruiser or their whoever deals lots of damage dealing so much damage on them in the first QW making them backing off in the mid to late game if you have the same kind of build you can do that and you can nullify a person instantly uh, but the main problem and why I partially say Xerath is not that easy as I said before is that you need to understand positioning Xerath is a champion that requires stellar positioning in the back it's an artillery mage and artillery mage require positioning such as Velkos, such as uh, Ziggs you need to stay behind the enemy behind your team, behind your uh, players, and you need to understand clearly this police crank hinted right here. Oh, I got him. One. Oh my god, I missed everything there. You need to understand positioning, so if you focus on positioning, then the rest of the stuff will come from itself. And as you can see, I did not die a single time this game. And that's because I tried to focus on my positioning, I did not go for early trades that could have killed me. I had maybe one almost dead moment, but in general I did pretty fine. So you understand now how to generally play Xerath, even though my team basically carried uh, and I got enabled mid to late game, because I got enabled at that point, it's like a cast in getting online, there is not much for them to do after that. And if your team is not doing fine, you should try to scale, you should try just to play around um, waves and to push them and to get farm and to finish your items and then to be careful early and mid game to ganks, you should be careful towards that position that we talked about and I believe playing Serat can also help you learn macro more because you need to be aware of your old positioning that's the first thing you need to be aware of how to survive ganks because it's so simple to miss your E and get caught it's mainly like Talia if you think about it uh, but it's different obviously uh, and also you need to uh, position properly in teamfights where it's the most important 
So these are the main tips that you should get from this video. I know the video wasn't the gameplay, it wasn't a perfect example of that, but it's a tutorial and I believe it reaches the points that I wanted to talk about so I guess we hit them up. I, I could actually show you a game where uh, I deal the same kind of damage but my team ints and uh, I, ca I kind of try to drag the game uh, back on its feet. I did that last game again but uh, you get the main point of the video and I believe you understand it like this in this way too. I'm Drew Matt and I really hope you enjoyed this video guys. Goodbye.